people sense passion, you know, and if you're passionate about what you're doing, you're committed to it, um, you know, the money will come. You know, it, it takes a while, though. You, you're not going to raise a ton of money the first year. It's going to take a while to build reputational capital, you know, psychic income with your investors. And, you know, it just it'll happen. It just you need, you need to you need to really be committed to it, know what you're doing, have the time to do it also. If you're a real estate investor and are wondering how to raise and leverage private money to make more profit on every deal, then you're in the right place. On Raising Private Money, we'll speak with new and seasoned investors to dissect their deals and extract the best tips and strategies to help you get the money, because the money comes first. Now here's your host, Jay Connor. My guest today here on Raising Private Money, he has raised $120 million in private money. So if you're interested in private money in that world, you don't want to miss any of this. Well, for the last 20 years, he has spent building a vertically integrated farming business. Now, you might not know what that is. You're going to learn all about it. In the early 1990s, he started with a small vineyard and winery development in the Napa Valley of California. Well, this initial taste of farming ignited his new passion for agriculture and investing in it. So as I said in the past 20 years, the name of his company is Bravante Farm Capital. His company has required over $175 million in agricultural assets. And it includes the following, such as citrus, table grapes, wine grapes, stone fruit, and pistachios. Well, before founding Bravante Farm Capital, he spent 10 years as president in a real estate private equity company. And then prior to that, he was the president of American Real Estate Group, which he led the managed liquidation, listen to this, of $15 billion in real estate assets. And that was the then failed American Savings Bank. Well, since you are interested in private money, you don't want to miss a second of this episode. You're going to meet my special guest, George Bravante, right after this. Well, hello, George. Welcome to the show. Hey, glad to be here. I am so excited to have you. So, George, you know, as we were talking before we uh, launched the show, we have uh, really two audiences here on raising private money. We have all those real estate investors like myself and yourself that are interested in raising private money for their real estate deals because, frankly, we don't want to be in the situation that I was in 2009. I went to the local bank to get my deals funded. I had been using the local bank for six years and I was cut off with no notice. So here in this world of private money, of course, we make the rules instead of asking for a mortgage, we're offering a mortgage. So we want to talk to those people. And then we also want to talk to part of my audience that perhaps might be interested in being a private lender and just making passive investments, getting really high rates of return safely and securely. So I want to dig into your experience first, George, about how it is you started out raising private money for real estate. How did you start with private money? How did you learn about it? You know, how did you initially start raising private money? You know, I mean, I had a little bit of money to start with because the American savings transaction, I had, I got a payout out of that. So I had a little bit of my own money. So, I mean, I, to me, I, I went to people that I knew well, just talk to them about how I'm investing side by side with them and slowly started buying, you know, smaller assets and just building a program. And, you know, I mean, my, to me, my secret to success is I do what I say. I take care of my partner's money better than my own. And that's kind of how it happened. People trust me. They have always come through for them. I mean, not every deal has been the best in the world. We, we, we win a lot more than we lose. But, you know, even when things go bad, I hang in there and fight to the death to the end. And, you know, and I just build a reputation if you want to do this kind of work. And, you know, it's rewarding. It's rewarding, too. I mean, having a following of people that trust you and look up to you as somebody they can invest in is, is a very gratifying kind of situation. So, I mean, that's, that's how it started. Absolutely. I can relate to that. Well, you just said something like really, really important. And that is 
first of all, do what you say you'll do. I mean, I tell people all the time, if you just do what you say you'll do and you show up when you say you're going to show up, you just left the majority of the crowd in the dust, right? Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> and so you're right. I mean, the, the reputation, you know, building a reputation, et cetera. So <clears throat> let's say that you're talking with a brand new real estate investor. I mean, for goodness sakes, you've raised $120 million. That's a large sum of money for most people, of course, starting out to raise private money can even think about. My very first private lender started with $250,000 with me, with my first private lender all the way back in 2009. So for someone that's never raised private money, they're wanting to start, uh, what advice would you give them? You know, I mean, I think the first thing they need to do is come up with a very well thought out program of what they're going to do if they get the money so that, you know, you know, they have a plausible, you know, transaction that, you know, is well underwritten. So they have a deal that will work. First of all, you need a deal that you're pretty certain is going to, I wouldn't try this stretching or, or the first deal I did. I mean, it was a home run kind of. And generally, everybody's first deal is a little better, seems like to me. So, I mean, the first thing is you need something you can sell to people and, you know, and really have your heart into it and know and really have confidence it's going to work. And, you know, the rest is a lot easier, you know, and then you have to have the confidence to, you know, approach people and, you know, and sell them on the idea. And you got to have passion about what you're doing. People sense passion, you know, and if you're passionate about what you're doing, you're committed to it, um, you know, the money will come. You know, it, it takes a while, though. You, you're not going to raise a ton of money the first year. It's going to take a while to build reputational capital, you know, psychic income with your investors. And, you know, it just it'll happen. It just you need, you need to you need to really be committed to it, know what you're doing, have the time to do it also. So if you're starting out and you're working another job or something, you know, you need to make sure you can actually fulfill your obligations as a general partner or owner. So. Well, you just said a bucket full of gold nuggets in a very short period of time. So just to reiter reiterate and unpack a little bit what you said was, first of all, you said you got to have your program together, right? You got to have your program together. What What is it that you're offering? Since we're not asking for a mortgage, we're offering a mortgage, we're offering a program for people to invest in. And, and I just want to go ahead and do this, uh, George, before we get into your agricultural space, which actually I find fascinating. So speaking of have, when you're raising private money, now everything that I do in real estate primarily is single family houses. So we call it one-offs, like we have a private lender or a couple of private lenders that's funding a single family house. They may have an after repair value of between $300,000 and $900,000. So you know, I tell people in your see in your world, you're you're like raising large amounts of money for your fund, your capital fund for much larger deals. So what I practice and what I teach in the single family house space is know your program. George, I want to go ahead and give this away to the audience right now. This is a ebook you can download, Seven Reasons Why Private Money Will Skyrocket Your Real Estate Business and Help You Build Incredible Wealth. Here's the deal, my friend. If you want private money, put yourself in the driver's seat of your real estate investing business. Download this free guide, and this will teach you the program that you need that George was just talking about that you're going to share with people. You can download this money guide at jconnor.com, www.jconnor, J-A-Y-C-O-N-N-E-R.com forward slash money guide. Again, that's Jay Connor, J A Y C O N N E R dot com forward slash money guide to get on the fast track for private money. Another thing you said uh, a moment ago, George, was confidence. You said the word confidence, and I couldn't agree more. I mean, if if a person is not confident in what they're offering, what they're teaching, then who? In the, I mean, if if you're not sold on yourself, who else is going to be sold on you? <laughs> Absolutely. There are, the, there, there, are the, there are the off chance people that have confidence that are totally worthless, though, too. You got to be careful with those guys. <laughs> <laughs> for sure. For sure. And so you said confidence and uh, knowing your program. And another word you said 
I don't know, as I recall, another guest on my show, and I've had over 500 episodes, maybe 600 now. When it comes to the, and so this is so important. I'm so glad you said this word. When it comes to attracting, and I say attracting on purpose, because I'm not running around chasing, begging, selling, trying to persuade. I'm just sharing what I am passionate about. And that's the word you use, passionate. I mean, passion, being passionate about what you're doing automatically attracts people into what you've got going on. And then another phrase you said, you got so many nuggets here that we're going to put in the show notes. Another phrase you said that I love is I think you said, and correct me if I'm wrong, you, you might, it might have been a different nuance to it. Did you use the phrase reputational capital? And what does that mean? Well, I mean, reputational capital is, you know, when you have a great reputation, it's like money almost, right? It's like capital. You know, people want to get a piece of that action because, you know, they, you know, they understand that their their chances of making higher returns and and, and doing better are with high reputational people that have done it over and over again and been successful. I mean, you know, there's a lot of people have the one hit wonder, you know, I mean, it's, it's something else to do for 25 years and consistently produce results. Um, so that's that's how I think about it. Yeah, well, I love that. Reputational. And so that's another phrase, another nugget in the show notes. I don't think I've had another guest actually use that phrase, reputation. And you're right. I mean, it's like, what do you have more valuable than your reputation and your relationships? <laughs> you <know>? Nothing. <laughs> Particularly when it comes into when it comes into this space. So I really appreciate those phrases. All right, so let's move on to what you are so passionate about. And boy, I bet you've got a story on this. So as I, as I said, you know, in the intro, I mean, all the way back in the early 1990s, you started with this small vineyard. You had a winery development in Napa Valley. And then that thing grows into all this stuff. Is pista- I mean, I never thought about pistachios being an asset, but it sounds like pistachios. Hey, pistachios, are, pistachios are really good. I mean, they make a lot of money and they're... Very valuable. I mean, I mean, almonds and aren't they, used, they were the rage five years ago, and they're overproduced now. But the pistachio thing is good right now. Ooh, I tell you, my daddy, who turns ninety years old this year, by the way, my daddy, that is his favorite thing at Christmas, and he don't want to mess with shelling them. He just wants a bag that's already shelled so he can well, go to town. So, by, get- <laughs> we want to hear the story. Take us back to the beginning. How in the world did you get all passionate about the agricultural investing space? And then we for sure, we want to hear about how people can get involved. But take us back to the beginning of this story. You know, the, the winery thing was kind of just a, 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 an offshoot kind of, you know, when American Savings ended and I, asked, I made some money on that deal where we my, my, I was getting married. And my wife worked for Hal Barnett of Barnett Vineyards in Napa Valley. And we went up there to deliver a document, actually. And I looked around and I said, wow, we should do this. And we bought a property like a week later. And we've had it for 30 years or more. And we make great Bordeaux-style wines. And small deal, 2,000 cases a year. We've, you know, we've done it together. Our kids are not involved in it, but they grew up they grew up inside of it. So anyway, that I didn't, you know, I, anybody likes growing grapes in the Napa Valley. I mean, it's a wonderful place. Beautiful climate's amazing. Everything's great there. The food's great. So you know, then I, I was back, still in the private equity business, and we were in the mobile home industry, buying, accumulating mobile home parks. And we had this crazy idea to get into the you know retailing side of selling mobile homes inside of our mobile home parks. The biggest seller was in Visalia, California, where I still live today. So we were in Newport Beach. We didn't like it. Kobe Bryant lived on our street with some Russian oligarchs. It's horrible. And just from a logistics point of view, security and crazy people everywhere. It was only eight houses and it was like a freak show on this one little cul-de-sac we lived on. And uh, so anyway, we decided we'd go back to Napa, but we'd stop in Visalia for a year. And uh, on this, we bought this big retailer there of mobile homes. And there was a great little school there called St. Paul School. And we stayed there for the school for our three young boys that we had, three young sons that we had. 
and the deal junkie that I am, you know, that was when, you know, this is like the, like 1997, 98. And the citrus thing was on his ass really bad. I mean, it was just terrible. And I, you know, I bought my first ranch, almost got it for free from a lender. And, you know, I started seeing how much money this stuff makes, you know, the cash flow characteristics. And, you know, and I mean, I bought that ranch, I think, for a thousand bucks an acre. It's now worth 35,000 an acre, nice. you know, 20 some years later. And we bought another ranch and another ranch. Then we bought a cold storage and a packing house, farming company, sales company. We got the table grape deal, bought a big ranch system from a famous guy. So, you know, and I mean, the thing I like, I mean, I just, didn't realize this, but, you know, living around the growing season, you know, it's lucrative, but I mean, you're creating these beautiful assets and, you know, I, I'm a guy that could probably be happy doing anything, but, you know, I'm, you know, I'm, 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 I'm just built that way. If it's mine and I'm doing it, I'm all in totally, totally with it. So, and, you know, we've been doing it for a long time and I love doing it and I got a great, I mean, we have a th thousand people that probably work for us and we got like 97% retention over 17 years. You know, so, I mean, it, it's, it's, we just have a great all around program. I mean, things are tougher today for like they are for everybody. Rates are up. Inflation is crazy. Our inputs are high. The grocers are fighting us. But, you know, I mean, you live around the growing season. It's great. You know, if you had a bad year last year, you might have the greatest year in the world this year. I mean, every year you get a new, you get a new chance. And, um, and, you know, we don't lever these things too much. It's 50, 45% leverage, 50% leverage. Um, you know, and even in the worst of times, people still buy oranges and grapes it's at 50, <laughs> 50 cents a time. You know, they go in, they buy half a pound of grapes for a dollar. And, you know what I mean? It's, it's a pretty safe environment, right? And, you know, we're struggling on cash flow a little bit now. We're still doing okay, but, but the ranches are escalating in value tremendously with this inflation spike we're in the middle of. So how I think about it is we make pretty good money every year. You know, and then we're getting pretty good appreciation every year on top of it. So, you know, it's a very safe place to be. And, you know, the other thing, too, is, you know, we we, we grow amazing product. I mean, I, I love growing great produce that people enjoy. I mean, it's just part of my psyche, I guess. But I, I love that. And we, you know, we, we ship Costco, Sands, Walmart, you know, Kroger, you name it. We, so, you know, we ship it up, you know, 30, 40 percent over to Asia. You know, we are, we're, we're in a higher kind of you know, echelon of quality, you know, we, we farm harder, but, you know, for, for investors, you know, in our, in our, our program, you know, we don't do, we're, we're, we're focused on a little area around Fresno where the water's amazing the soil's amazing. Microclimate's amazing. We don't do a tremendous amount of transactions because it's hard to find what I want, but you know, and our minimum investment is 25 K. So I mean, it's not a huge commitment to do it. It's all equity. You know, I'm a limited partner alongside everybody else. I'm a GP too, but I mean, I, I invest 10, 20 percent in every deal. Um, so I mean, it's a like a family investing deal almost. You know, the people that invested with me 25 years ago are like family now. You know, I mean, they, they sure bitch and moan to me like they're family anyway. <laughs> so they're very, <laughs> very, very, very confident with me. You know. So, yeah. Well, I can relate to what you just said. I've got um, right now. I have 47. Um, and I'm sure you have more, but I have 47 private lenders, investors that invest in, in our deals and over 90% of them have been with us more than 10 years, right? Yeah, and um, they never want their money back. They never want their money back. They just want to keep, because I mean, where else are they going to get, you know, a nice rate of return like they get with us. Now you said something in passing that I don't want the audience to miss. So I'm going to repeat it. You said your leverage is only about 45 to 50%. So let's make sure everybody understands what you just said and why this makes this a very conservative investment for your investors. So explain what you mean to say the novice investor that wants to get started and invest with you, right? Um, what's 45 to 50% leverage and, and why is that so safe? I mean, you and I know. Well, I mean, we just closed the transaction we just did. It was, you know, 4 million of equity, 2.9 million of debt. That's to capitalize the deal, but 155 acres, table grapes and citrus. And the citrus was Eric Aaron Eric Navels, mandarins, like you know, go to the cutie brand and then some lemons. So, I mean, 
low, you know, small loans, you know, you, you can cover those even in tough times. So, you know, I, I intentionally, all of the things I own, I've never levered up. I have very low leverage because I don't want to be a risk of losing an asset, which I've never done before, ever. So, I mean, my whole life has been this way. So the ag thing, we just want to, you know, you could, we could have borrowed another 20, 30% if we wanted to, you know, I could get that, we, you know, the banks would give me the money, but I want to make sure, and, and we're still projecting, I think a 17 IRR, which means 17% of your money for the 10 years, you know, after we have the reversionary value at the end. So, I mean, it's a pretty high return, very safe chance of losing your money are really difficult. I mean, it's, we don't, never done it before and I don't plan on doing it anytime soon. So, you know, we could get a higher return if we wanted to lever it up more, but I, I, I'm, I'm content with how it is. So, yeah. Well, and I'm so glad you shared that uh, same way for me. Um, I've been blessed and the deals that we do, we've rehabbed about 400, uh, fixed and flipped or buy and hold about 475 houses here in Eastern North Carolina. And, have every deal worked out the way I thought it might? No. In fact, none of them do. They either make a little less or they make more or they make a lot less or they make a lot more. But here's one thing I can say, and you just said it as well, George, and that is not one of my private lenders has not received every penny that they were expecting to receive. And that goes back to what you said at the beginning of the show. Do what you say you'll do. You better know what you're doing. Know your program. Um, keep your reputation clean. And of course you do that by doing what you say you'll do. But the, and what we're talking about now is not over -le leveraging the property. I mean, nothing would make me more upset and it's never happened. I started borrowing private money in 2009. So I don't go back as far as you do, but I started in 2009 and, um, you know, it's just very, very important to me that our private lenders, when you said this at the beginning of the show, you said you're more concerned and you take better care of your private lenders and investors' money than you do your own. Yeah, my wife's always, always mad about that. I mean, <laughs> it's like, well, I mean, and, and, you know, we, we do fine, right? But I mean, I'm very keenly, my, I grew up a poor kid in Jersey, you know, my dad was a mailman. You know, the idea of losing, somebody who would give me the opportunity would give me their money, right? I cannot lose that money. I could, I've yeah. got to make the return for them. You know, I just, you know, I mean, I'm 64 years old and I'm still scared to death about it, right? I just can't do it. And I mean, I just, you know, and I mean, I think that's, I mean, I could have done a lot more. I could have been bigger. I could have done a lot of stuff, but I mean, that is a guiding light for me. You know what I mean? I just can't do it. And I, I mean, I do have the confidence to, to take risk and buy things. And I mean, I mean, in the last deal we did, I, I, I mean, the four million bucks, three million of our people I know, somehow, some way, that are you know, some are more important to me than others, obviously, because I know some a lot better. But I mean, you know, it does take, as they say in Jersey, balls to take people's money and invest it in things because it's always uncertain. You know, I, I believe, you know, I just, it just always seems to work out if you work hard enough and you do the right job and, you know, take advantage. I mean, it, it always has worked out, but it still is a little unnerving the moment of truth for me. You know what I mean? I want to, I just can't have a bad deal. I just can't, you know, I just, it makes me crazy to even think about it. So, you know, it's out of your control sometimes, you know, it's, I mean, I'll tell you, I'll tell you a great story about this though. Years ago, I bought this really great portfolio table grapes. I mean, the best land in the world, probably, for growing anything. And we did really well. I mean, we returned, like, almost all the equity in the first four years, I think. And then Donald Trump put the tariffs on. And that blew up the grape business because the 30% we sent to China was pushed back on the domestic market, right? So unforeseen consequences just happened, right? So when that happened, the grape thing just imploded. I mean, the prices went way down. We lost money. First time ever I've been in a situation like this. And anyway, so I needed to make a capital call, which I'd never done before. You know, I've just never had to. And my other, one of my other partners, not in this deal, but they're like, hey, these guys are going to tar and feather you. You're finished. <laughs> they're never going to give you a dime. This thing's gone. And, you know, and I just called everybody. I said, hey, listen, I'm really sorry. You know, we've done really well on this. I'm still a believer in it. You know, and I'll buy anybody out that doesn't, that needs, that wants to get out. But uh, any, I, I really think you should, people should stay in It's the winter property. And, you know, and I don't know what to say other than that. And every single person re-upped. 
in the in the middle of a crisis, basically. Mm-hmm. And I and I and I believe that was because they trust me to do the right thing for them, and you mm-hmm. know, and they and they didn't want to disappoint me either. You know what I mean? They, I worked so hard on it. You know, they just and you know we're coming out of it and we're doing fine. But you know what I mean? It was it was for me it was like a very like heart you know. Uh, I don't know the word heartfelt moment almost that people, mm-hmm. you know, stepped up and did, you know, because I couldn't do it all myself. Sure. And well, so anyway, it was a, it was a really, of, really a cool moment, moment for me though. There's a couple of big lessons, a couple of big takeaways in what you just shared in that story. Number one is you didn't go bury your head in a hole and hide from the problem, which unfortunately some people would. Number two, you were totally upfront and truthful. And how about this word? Communicated with your investors <laughs> and lenders instead of just trying to go over here and hide somewhere and, you know, hope that everything's going to get better. And so um, a big lesson right there is communicate, communicate, tell the truth. I mean, you just can never argue. You, you just can't beat telling the truth. <laughs> yeah, well, it's pretty unforgiving when you don't. <laughs> so. That's right. That's right. Now, Robbie Swindell is joining us here on the show. He says that um, he has a home in uh, Napa Valley. Do you still invest there? And you do. You, you said you do. Robbie, no, also, no, we, we, we don't. We can't afford anything. Anymore. We yeah, can't so, afford anything there now. I mean, it's like crazy. So where are you investing now? We're investing in just the Central Valley here Central by, Valley. by Fresno, California. There you go. Awesome. Robbie says he's invested in a winery before his grandfather worked for Robert Mondavi. And um, he loves uh, he loves your example you just gave of reputational capital. But Robbie has a question. And his question is, is and this is a very broad question, so you can answer it whatever way you like. Um and that is, Robbie says, what advice do you have for young investors in today's market? You know, my, I have three sons, 20, 29, 27, 25, and I, I hang around with them and their friends. They're all well-educated kids and doing pretty well. And, you know, my, only, my, my advice is do something in real assets and get started now. Don't wait. And what I mean by that is, you know, buy a freaking you know, duplex, buy a rental home, buy something and get started. You know, I mean, I, I, you know, when I, we, my wife and I got married, she was an apartment broker, pretty good at it. And we had this thing, we were, we were going to buy an apartment complex every year. And we didn't do that. We bought some, but we didn't do that. We got, we, you know, we got sideways and doing a lot of bigger deals with these bigger companies that were, we were more like investors for private equity kind of thing. But, you know, I look back on that, you know, I tell kids today, I say, listen, buy a rental house every year for the next 25 years and you'll be a happy guy or woman. So that's what I would say. Get started. You know, get, you know, if you can't do it yourself, get five friends to do it with you and buy the first property and get going. Because that's, you know, the first one's the hardest. And once you see how it works, you'll want to do more and you'll get smarter and better, you know, and get ready to roll your sleeves up and do some work too, because when the water, water heater breaks, you got to get over there and make sure it gets done and fixed or whatever. So. <laughs> I love it, George. By the way, George, um, you shared as part of your background story, and I didn't mention it at the time, but I will now. By the way, you were mentioning that uh, you were interested in mobile home parks back in the day and retailing of mobile homes. Well, you probably don't know this, but my father, Wallace Connor, who turns 90 years old uh, later this year, uh, he's still got three developments going that he's negotiating negotiating right now. He's building out a 375 single family house development. His company, Connor Corporation, was the largest retailer of mobile homes, manufactured homes in the nation. Up until 19, uh, he was the top from 1983 to 1988. And then unfortunately, the majority of all the consumer finance for mobile homes went away. And so that's when, I mean, I grew up, I grew up in the housing business with my dad in mobile homes and manufactured housing. But I knew if I ever got out of that, I wanted to get into single family houses. But I'm 62 years old. My dad turns 90 and 
I pray I'll have half the energy he does when I'm turning 90 years old. <laughs> well, my, my dad's 95 now, and <laughs> it's unbelievable. I mean, he's he's slowing down a little bit, but he's still so healthy, it's ridiculous. Yeah, yeah. that reminds me of an, an article here in Raleigh, North Carolina. The main newspaper for the whole state is the News and Observer. We call it the News and Disturber. Anyway, there was an article on this father and son that still had this pretty large realty company in Raleigh and the father was 93 the son was in his 60s and the son is asking his dad when can we retire <laughs> <laughs> you know my, my young my youngest went to Chapel Hill oh really UNC yep. yep love it well here's the deal people like people I'm, I'm starting to get to the age George will I say Jay are you thinking about retiring I'm going retire. What is that? What would I do? I don't watch TV. I don't play golf. You know, this, I, you know, I don't even think of this as work, George. This is just what I do, right? I'm, I'm the same way. I agree with you. <laughs> it's just what we do. It's what we do. George, what an inspiration you are here on the show. Thank you so much for joining me. Final words. And then one more time, how people can learn how to invest with you. You know, we have this, our, our website, BravantePharmCapital.com. You know, we, it, we, we have built it to be an educational vehicle for people that don't know anything about agriculture or investing in agriculture. So if you go to that website and you just sign up, you'll get, you can, you know, you, you, everything we do, and we're always videoing or picking or pruning or irrigating or, you know, it's, it's a good way to learn about it. If you, even if you don't want to invest in it, it's a great way to learn about it. There's a lot of video there explaining in detail how we, like, for instance, we pick oranges into a bin. It tells you the dimensions of the bin and how much it weighs and how many, you know, it just all this minutia. It's simple stuff, but it gives you a real understanding and a lot of video on how it works. So, you know, and then as we move forward, you know, we're only going to do one or two or three deals a year probably. So if you like it and you, and you study it and you want to be involved, you know, you'll, if you sign up, to, for our website, you'll 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 get a notice that we're, you know, raising money for what. You can look at it, some you're interested in or not. But anyway, you know, we we have a family of investors and family of, of non-investors who just follow us. And, you know, we have a website. We sell we sell we ship oranges nationwide in the you know season and all kinds of stuff. So it, it'd be it'd be a fun thing to to follow. And you know, if somebody really wants to get involved in it, you know, they come visit us here and they see and see it up close and personal how it works, you know, they really want to do it or not. So anyway, it's a simple deal. You know, we're user friendly in a big way. So anyway, so PravantiFarmCapital.com is a great way to learn about what we do and see if you want to have a be part of what we do. That's wonderful. I'm not going to call his last name, but Thomas just said, I'm all in. He's been buying Timberland for a better America. He wants to come on with George now. So there you go. Thomas will be checking you out. So visit George and his team at www.bravantefarmcapital.com. That's Bravante, B as in boy, R-A-V as in Victor, A-N-T-E, bravantefarmcapital.com. And, of course, you'll see that in the show notes. George, God bless you. Thank you so much, brother. And also, and also tell everybody to come to Napa Valley and come to Bravante Vineyards. <laughs> we, need, we, need, we need all the guests we can get. <laughs> There you go. Awesome. Thank you, George. There you have it, my friend. Another amazing episode of Raising Private Money. I'm Jay Connor, the Private Money Authority, also your host. And we always really appreciate you subscribing, sharing, rating, and reviewing us and following us. Because when you do, that allows us to keep having more amazing guests just like George Bravante. So if you're watching on YouTube, be sure and subscribe. Hit that, um, that bell so you don't miss out on any notifications upcoming up. And again, on iTunes, Spotify, be sure and follow us. I'm wishing you the very best in real estate investing. And here's to taking your business to the next level. We'll see you right here on the next episode of Raising Private Money with Jay Connor. Are you feeling inspired by the knowledge you gained in this episode? Then head over to jconner.com slash moneyguide. That's jconner.com slash moneyguide 
and download your free guide that shares seven reasons why private money will skyrocket your real estate investing business right now. Again, that's jconnorcom slash money guide to get your free guide. We'll see you next time on Raising Private Money with Jay Connor.